Most importantly, let's bring in our pres- our guest that's going to be talking about this hot topic. How are you doing today? Pretty good. How about yourself? Oh, I can complain, but I won't. No, I'm just kidding. I'm having a wonderful day. Mm-hmm. We Me got, too. Uh, I mean, today has been so packed, and it sounds like we're coming towards a close soon, but we have two more awesome sessions to cover about sustainability on AWS Earth Day here on AWS On Air, where you could catch us live on Fridays. <laughs> on AWS On Air, on Twitch. Yeah, did you know AWS actually broadcasts on Twitch fairly regularly? We have our Friday show, which is AWS On Air, and then we have a subset of shows that focuses on uh, security. Art, you have your own show that focuses on things. You want to go and just plug that real quick? Sure. My show is called Under the Hood with AWS, and we talk about topics specific around the kind of general EC2 area. We get a little bit technical, and we've covered everything, Kyle, from VPNs and uh, security stuff to how to uh, do software development using an EC2 Mac instance and even get dirty, and uh, we uh, fix some coding changes as well for people, did an entire app development. So pretty cool stuff, and that show is on Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Uh, Pacific time, 5 p.m. Eastern time for those in the U.S., uh, so kind of late in Europe. But uh, we get a great audience, Kyle, globally. And uh, just thanks to everybody joining us today as well. We've got a lot of people out there. And I just want to reiterate, because um, a couple of people have asked, uh, first, they always ask, is that plant real? We already joked, yes, it is. Number two, on a serious note, uh, do we take questions? Uh, the answer to that is yes, we do take questions. So drop a question in the chat session if you have anything for me, Kyle, uh, or Elon, and uh, we can uh, get going here as well. So I'm, uh, we're excited to have you here, uh, Elon. And it, before I butcher your name uh, any further, why don't you introduce yourself and uh, give us an idea of what you do at Amazon? And we're really excited to have you here today. Yeah, thanks, Art. Yeah, so uh, I'm with AWS, and I'm a principal uh, global impact computing specialist. I lead our machine learning and HPC global impact computing team. Um, where I focus on circular economy, climate risk, and uh, ESG. Prior to AWS, I had a long career in finance, and I decided to come here because I wanted to use the power of the cloud to support the lives of humans, other species, and the environment. So you already created two questions, uh, for me at least, uh, or at least for the audience. One I think is really simple. We have already discussed what ESG is, but I think you should probably at least tell the audience what those three letters stand for so that everybody understands. And then I'll get to my second question. Sure, so ESG stands for environmental, social, and governance. And it's part of an effort to understand the externalities of the production process for companies. They're not necessarily embedded in the price of products. So when a company creates carbon footprint, there is a cost for a society that's not necessarily embedded in the price. And this is becoming more and more of an issue. So the idea of coming up with those disclosures in the US and in Europe, et cetera, is for bringing the externalities inside of the economy so we can actually measure the impact of those externalities on a a product pricing and um, the whole economy in general. All right, and we also talked earlier as well about the importance for CEOs and others about the e- about ESG and making business decisions. So I think the impact here as we talk through this is really important. But the other thing that you brought up is is is, is the circular econ- circular economy uh, transition journey. I think we should describe what the circular economy is and that uh, transition uh, is as well. Right. So circular economy is sort of part of this whole movement around ESG. Um, The circular economy is this idea of designing out waste and pollution from the production process and re-engineering our systems to become more circular as opposed to linear. What does that mean? A linear process based on the take, uh, make and waste meaning we take resources from nature, we make things, and then we we waste them, is no longer available because it doesn't respect the planetary boundaries. So we start consuming resources more than the planet can regenerate, and that's not sustainable. So the whole idea of circular economy is to transition from a linear process to a circular process 
where we have then the opportunity to reuse, redesign, remanufacture, refurbish, and then finally recycle products and materials. All right. Um, so I think that uh, one of the things that we had discussed, you had brought up here with the circular economy is, is well, maybe we could define what the problem may be. How do we solve part of this problem here in, in regarding the circular economy? So it's pretty uh, clear that essentially what I feel like you're saying is, is that all of us have an impact on a global basis in what we do and an impact of something I'm based in the United States, you know, something that I do in the United States or the pollution that I have doesn't necessarily uh, stay within my own boundaries, right? So my impact is greater or whether I believe it or want to believe it, it is greater. So how do we kind of address those uh, changes and and how do you in your work do that? Uh, all? Right, so we, we talk to a lot of customers. So my job is to talk to customers and help accelerate their path towards a more circular economy. And by doing so, we have identified series of trends that are going on in the world of circular economy. So the conversation that we're having with um, our customers is around taking their waste and making that become part of the, a resource for them, for example, by reusing some of those um, uh, materials. So there's this whole idea of the internet of waste. How can the process of um, bring, taking back waste become connected so some of those flows can then become predictable. Also, computer vision is a big part of the trend. You know, using computer vision to sort out recycling materials, we can dive a little deeper into that. Bio-based materials, so um, replacing some chemical materials that are toxic for the environment with bio-based materials and using computational chemistry simulations on AWS to find out what are those uh, materials that can then be the ones that are gonna replace the, the more old school toxic materials. Also remanufacture, so designing products to be circular uh, by design. Uh, so the products can then be disassembled and then the parts can be reused or the materials inside of the product, sometimes rare metals, things like that can then be reused and recycled. Blockchain is a uh, top of mind, right? Because once you start recovering, for example, some of those rare metals from inside of hard drives or um, from uh, components of uh, turbines or cars, then those parts can then be resold on a secondary market on the blockchain. Right? So blockchain is uh, really important for the circular economy and uh, repairability, right? So uh, repairability is becoming part of the, uh, the regulations in Europe. So now... Um, there is a lot going on around the um, the new rules um, that are coming out in Europe around the Circular Economy Action Plan uh, that's part of the EU Green Deal. And uh, repair is uh, one of the things that uh, companies are being um, mandated to offer. Yeah, maybe so, we um, touch on a couple of the things you just said there. One, the repairability, the idea, right? Of course, that, you know, I sit here with a PC, the idea that I can get that PC repaired. I think there's a concept that for a while, quite a few of these electronic devices are just made to be disposable only. And, you know, to this disposability of them, we're losing both precious metals that can be re reused in other products and the like. So the reusability of that as well here. And I also... Uh, think that, you know, you talked uh, a bit about the usage as well of other technologies for that are cloud-based uh, as well that can be used here to help satisfy or help uh, fix that. I think Kyle and I uh, listened to a great example. I keep coming back to our algae example, Kyle, but, you know, I mean, who never, who, who ever thought that algae would uh, feature so prominently in our lives, but that was the usage of AI, Elon, to mm -hmm. identify, uh, and the use of the cloud in particular, to identify a possible yeah. bloom in algae here. And so in this instance, you know, you're talking about the possible usage of generative AI and ML yeah. for other work here. So I just wanted to kind of highlight some of that, in, both in transition to what we did, but also the importance of, of that um uh, from a sustainability push absolutely yeah so look I, I i truly believe that technology is our biggest ally in enabling this uh the global economy to transition from a linear to a circular economy 
And the reason I say this is because right now we are going through this uh, moment in time where the convergence of technologies such as AI, ML, high performance computing, IoT, blockchain, big data analytics, simulation, agent-based simulation, additive manufacturing, all those things combined are really accelerating the transition to a circular economy. And AWS, we have a lot of services that actually touch on all those technologies. So think of it as the Lego blocks, right? So when we go talk to the customers, we actually work backwards from whatever problem they're trying to solve around circular economy. And we say, well, we have all the technologies available. Let's create what we um, are we calling here the blueprints together for your transition for a circular economy by combining those technologies. So those technologies can be used across in, horizontally across any vertical in the economy. So energy, materials, industrials, retail, finance, IT, doesn't really matter. It's more about designing the solutions for the customers and applications that uh, will support their transition. So for example, in uh, high performance computing and simulation, uh, I'll give you four examples of how our uh, technologies are allowing customers to accelerate their path to circular economy. So uh, recently, uh, right before we invent last year, we worked with Accenture, Intel, and Good Chemistry to build a supercomputer on demand uh, on AWS cloud to find the exact molecule that destroys PFAS, um, which is a uh, microplastic that's been contaminating our waters since 1950s. Right, so every time uh, we wash our clothes or there's a Teflon pan that eliminates some of those microplastics back in the water systems, those microplastics never go away because they're not biodegradable. So it's been, it's been accumulating and uh, there was a way that by building this 1 million core supercomputer, we were able to find the exact molecule to destroy one of the PFAS uh, compounds. Um, so. So this is a very clear example of how high performance computing can be used for the circular economy, since one of the tenets of the circular economy is to design out waste and pollution from the environment. Right, so this the example, system. by the way, sorry to interrupt you. No um, I think as well, earlier in the day, we also discussed about part of the PFAS stuff. So getting into this is really cool. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and so uh, this is, I think this, you, when we were uh, talking about this before, we talked a little bit about the circular economy, but I also think there's a regulatory component here along as well that is kind of contributing to the reason or rationale about trying to to, to do some of the work in the circular economy. Maybe you could touch on a little bit of that as well. I, earlier today, we've spent time discussing you know some of the European and other uh, environmental regulations that are out there, but maybe you could expand on that a little bit here. Okay, sure. So the, the regulations that are coming out of the circular economy uh, action plan in Europe are really pushing businesses in the EU to transition to circularity by 2030. And not only the companies that are operate just in the EU, but even American companies or Asian companies that export products to the EU will have to comply and, and, and take action. So the rules um, to make all physical goods in the EU um, market uh, friendlier to the environment, they touch on durability of the products, repairability of the products, reusability, uh, recyclability, recyclability, and energy efficiency. Right? So the new European regulatory reporting standards called the European Sustainability Reporting Standards, ESRS, they really raise the bar significantly on data disclosure and transparency on this topic and the requirements to disclose the business circularity, they go beyond just uh, carbon footprint and things like that, but also showing what percentage of your CapEx, OPEX and turnover are aligned with the EU circular economy taxonomy. So what are some of the challenges and opportunities in this space, uh, Elon? So, uh, I think you know the the first thing, as everybody else here already said, is is the data, right? So we are we are a technology company, and when we go talk to customers, they are starting their circular economy transition. The first thing we can do to help them is to um, build a, a circular economy data lake, where we help them harmonize data coming from different silos, from different uh, parts of the process, into a data lake that we can then calculate KPIs 
that will then lead to some metrics. And we can do that um, with this thing called the Circular Intelligence Framework, which is a collaboration between AWS and Accenture. So we have a design, a whole uh, system to talk to customers and understand for the different pillars of the product life cycle, what are the specific KPIs and metrics that we can help them calculate with their data uh, so they can comply with those regulations. So for example, if you think in terms of the product development life cycle, starting from the design phase, the design phase, uh, companies are looking into how they can design their products or their packaging to be more sustainable. So in that case, we can work with them and bring in technologies such as generative AI to uh, design um, packages that are optimize not only for cost and weight, but also for circularity or carbon footprint, for example. So that's one example of product design. But then well, it I goes think you've on. touched. Yeah, I, ju I just want to, I think you've touched on something that has also been a theme we've had here too, is, 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 is that, you know, the key is, 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 is doing this as part of the initial design, the importance to all about doing that. And so many of the people who are out here listening today are builders or designers or application developers. And not, we aren't, yes, we're consumers in our own lives as well, but we're also, we are at the kind of start of that uh, initial uh, uh, decision-making process. And so it's really important that design function. And I think, you know, right. there's a word we've used a few times here today is, is, is efficiency. You know, the efficiency of your design helps prevent us from utilizing unnecessarily uh, unnecessary things in 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 here that create a problem and that's a circular economy so right right yeah and, and, and look it goes really beyond just design so it goes in, from design it goes into procurement once the product is designed then you know what materials you're going to need to build that product it goes into procurement and then into operations the actual manufacturing of the product and then logistics the distribution of the product and then product use so part of circular economy is to keep products in use for longer, as long as possible at the top of the value hill, and then end of life. Then after end of life, it circles back into logistics and operations, so you create the circularity of the entire process. So for each one of the steps of the process, there are KPIs and metrics that we can help our customers bring into a data lake so they can at least start understanding where they are in the circularity journey, what's the status quo, and then we can provide recommendations so how they can optimize their entire circular process. And we can even do simulations, agent-based simulations, to uh, allow them to see different uh, thresholds and play with, uh, with different uh, parameters to really optimize the entire workflow process for their uh, company. Wow, this is uh, really interesting, at least to me. I think we've touched on uh, connecting back to quite a few of the other uh, speakers today, I never thought I'd spend as much time during a sustainability thing talking about uh, blockchain as well. But I've learned a great deal, Kyle, about the importance of it and how blockchain can also really impact the overall design of the sustainability effect. And here, you know, hearing that and also kind of the overall usage of HPC and and um, and, and the AI ML spaces. So I, I really appreciate a lot. Um, on uh, you joining us, both Kyle and I today, uh, you know, the, for this kind of Earth Day celebration uh, for how people can do this in the cloud. And, and I think your group has so many great aspects that customers can reach out to you and the other team members uh, to, to kind of embark on that journey. Is there anything else you'd like to tell anybody that uh, we haven't uh, spoken about yet? Today? Sure. Maybe I'll just leave you guys with this one thing. So, um, you know, a lot of companies are just starting on their circularity journey. And I think the most difficult part is really to get started, getting off the ground. There's a, it's almost like there's this feeling of a deer in the headlights where people don't really necessarily know how to even get started. If that's the case, please feel free to reach out to us. We'll help you design a data lake that will at least give you the current information for where you are, so then we can help you move on to the next level. But I think just getting started is the most important thing. All right. I awesome. think that that's a great way to end today, don't you think, Kyle? Well, we're not ending today. Just well, yet. I don't mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're ending yeah. with uh, yeah. one. Or You're trying to end the fun too soon. No, 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 no. Too I soon. didn't, you know, <laughs> overstepping is, my words. This is here. AWS Earth Day, not Fun Hating Friday. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, thank, thank you, you again, again so for much. joining us.
a lot. Yeah, this was very, very informative.